Hello, everyone. My name is Jill Momgren, Executive Director of America's Tooth Fairy National Children's Oral Health Foundation. Today with us, we have a very special guest. Her name is Dr. Sherilyn Sheets, and she is an educator, clinician, author, and lecturer, both nationally and internationally. She is co-executive director of the Newport Coast Oral Facial Institute, an international nonprofit teaching and research facility. She is also a clinical professor of restorative dentistry at the USC School of Dentistry and is on their board of counselors. Dr. Sheets is a past president of the American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry and the American Association of Women Dentists. She is also a fellow in the Academy of General Dentistry, American College of Dentists, International College of Dentists, Academy of Dentistry International, and the Pierre Fouchard Academy of Dentistry. She received the 2002 Gordon Christensen Award for Excellence in Lecturing, the 2004 USC School of Dentistry Alumnus of the Year Award, and the 2006 Section of Honor Award, a Distinguished Dentist Award from the California section of the Pierre Fouchard International Honor Dental Academy. Dr. Sheets is co-principal of a research project on dental implants and cracked teeth with Dr. James C. Earthman at the UC, UCI School of Engineering, and she has authored over 100 articles and has co-authored numerous textbook chapters. Dr. Sheets serves on numerous editorial boards of peer-reviewed journals, and she is also the founder and chairman emeritus of the Children's Dental Center in Inglewood, California, which is a nonprofit prototype dental center for providing multidisciplinary care to children of the working poor. She is also the founding chairman of the board of our organization, America's Tooth Fairy National Children's Oral Health Foundation. We are so delighted to have her here today uh, to talk with us a little bit about her experience and insights into the nonprofit world and need for provision of care for underserved children. So let's get started. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Sheets. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you, even if it's virtual. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, we have a few questions here for you today. Um, our first one was, was there a singular moment that made you decide to start a dental charity or was it more of a combination of events? Oh boy, that's a good question. Actually, <laughs> I, you know, I think it was both. Okay. So, uh, let me explain that because it sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, it's a combination, but, um, the singular event, uh, that probably made this happen was the fact that, um, my father had had a massive stroke. And so he was no longer in the family dental practice uh, overnight, you know, that we all uh, share. And so I was covering that office as well as my Newport Beach office. So I was in Inglewood part of the time and in Newport Beach part of the time. And that was an untenable situation because I was doing 10, 12 hour days. So we knew that we needed to do something special with, you know, the um, family dental office, which was you know, 4,000 square feet, 10 operatory. So it was a fairly large, you know, office for the time. And um, we wanted to do something that would help the community because the community had been really helpful and wonderful for us, you know, as uh, my parents spent their life there and certainly I grew up there. So anyway, with the original idea we had, which we thought was going to help the community, didn't really work out. So all of a sudden I had this responsibility, if you will, back on my shoulders with no idea of what to do with it but with the need to get you know something in place in place pretty quickly and i was debating you know what in the world to do and we thought maybe we could help elderly and then we thought maybe we could help children and the idea of helping children just really seemed like you could affect their lives uh and change things for them if we got them early enough and so we decided that um we wanted to do that and actually that part came in a flash uh you know i was um actually sitting in church and they started raising money for a church in for a yeah church in Inglewood that had lost their uh roof in the earthquake and I thought wait a second I've got a building in in uh, that's fully set up to help people dentally and we could focus on children and literally within an hour I had the entire thing just come into my mind and I just started writing I told my husband I said this is what I think we ought to do and he goes I think that's a great idea I knew nothing about what I was doing, but I crazily came down with the chicken pox from my daughter. Never had had a childhood disease in my life. And I was stuck at home and I thought, well, no time like the present, I'll write a, a grant. You know, so I'm writing a little grant and uh, talking to our office manager, Shirley, who I did that you know, a long time ago. 
And uh, we came up with this budget and it was $161,000. I thought, wow, a lot of money, you know, sent this in to what now is the California uh, uh, endowment. And amazingly, amazingly got it. And it turned out we were the first grant recipient of what is now the California endowment. They didn't know that I didn't have a 501c3. I didn't realize I needed one. And so then I get a telephone call that week from a friend and he turned out, he says, oh, well, I've got an extra one. Do you want to use ours? We immediately transferred the money in there and then started raising money. And we raised a million dollars, rebuilt the center into the Children's Dental Center and it opened. So it was just a crazy set of um, ignorance, maybe, <laughs> but a tremendous uh, desire, you know, to try and help uh, the community. And we thought that if we took a slightly different approach, but an approach that concentrated on prevention, and even though we knew these children had tremendous dental needs, we wanted to educate them and teach the family how to prevent oral disease, because we knew if we could do that while we were taking care of the problems they had, they would have a skill set that would allow them to maintain that health throughout their lifetime, save a tremendous amount of money for themselves and their family, and set them up so that they looked attractive, were healthy, and as they became adults, would have a better chance at being successful in life. So that was kind of the overall concept. And, uh, you know, it was uh, something that at the time was unique. <laughs> and, uh, and so it, I think it got people's attention and it, it helped us really launch it and get it going. That is an amazing story and certainly an achievement. And having been at that center, um, you know, and seeing how it's uh, served the populations there so well, um, it really is a spectacular, um, you know, clinic as well as an educational center, which I think is invaluable for the community there and helping to prepare children um, and their parents, you know, for that first dental visit. For many, that's maybe their first, very first dental visit, um, even for the parents. So. Uh, I, you know, it's brought so much to that community. And after, you know, serving and working with, um, you know, running that uh, dental clinic, uh, what prompted you to then um, start the National Children's Oral Health Foundation, or as we know it today, America's Tooth Fairy? Yes. Well, it was, um, it was pretty logical next step, because what I learned was there's never enough money. You know, we were constantly having to fundraise. And when you think about it as a for-profit, you know, professional business owner, it makes sense because every single patient that you treated, you lost money on because you weren't doing it for normal fees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like that old uh, joke about, you know, you were making lots of widgets or whatever it does, but you were losing money on each one, but you made up for it in volume, which just meant you were in more debt, right? So um, we kept thinking, okay, how are we gonna deal with this? And, um, and the, the concept of only getting money through grants, uh, you know, was, was just not viable because mm -hmm. the concept was, we will fund you for approximately three years and then we don't fund you anymore because you should be self-sufficient. But the mm -hmm. fact is, there was no way to be self-sufficient, particularly with the way we were approaching at the time, because the children that we were taking care of had no dental insurance, no subsidies from the government, because there wasn't anything for that middle group of the quote, working poor children, which now is not politically correct, but it is a definite, you know, clear uh, definition of the children we were taking care of. The parents were working, but they weren't making enough money to be able to care for dental needs for their children. So you had that problem and it needed a solution. And so one day when, after a dental convention was over, um, we're our little teams running around with, with luggage on wheels, going to every single manufacturer and say, do you need any of those things you were using for samples? Because don't throw it away, we'll take it. Yes. <laughs> so collecting all of the samples and everything from everybody. And then we noticed a couple other charities saw us doing that a couple of years and they started doing it too. So there's like a war on the floor for just to get <laughs> to the samples first and so we had uh, a wonderful very talented group on our board at the time that were actually ceos of different companies so we had uh robert Heyman from discus dental we had steve Simelmeyer from Cybron. you know we had you know this group of forward-thinking people and as we all sat around 
they said, you know, we need a national charity for children. We need something that's just focused on kids. And dentistry doesn't have that. There's charities, but they have multiple focuses. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I knew that we needed to have some sort of source for charities that were already established out there. You know, I thought, what a better way of trying to work with all of these needs if we could just take groups that were already established, but were just desperate for money like we were and mm -hmm. try and provide them some source that could help make their job easier. Um, because month every month you're trying to find out how to keep the lights on, you know, for many yes. of us out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thought, let's, let's do something. And we always loved Tooth Fairy, but at first we thought, we need to be taken seriously by the profession. So we came up with the National Children's Oral Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. And that worked fine for the dental profession, but people didn't like that. And so we said, well, really, we're the tooth fairy. So, uh, and then we became America's Tooth Fairy, which actually resonated better with everybody. So, uh, and the goal was to get the presidents of every single major company, which luckily I knew, uh, and together on a board and where normally they're competing with each other, being on this board was a neutral island. And that's basically what I done with the Children's Dental Center. We had uh, USC, UCLA, and Loma Linda all providing um, residents when we first started. And we said, this is a neutral zone where we're all here to help children that are in need. And so with the founding of the board, we got all of these CEOs to come together and they actually had such a great time because normally out on the floor, they had to be competitive with each other. And in the meetings, they would say, hey, this is so great. And how are you doing, Bob? Oh, I'm doing great. How about you? You know, and Dan, and it was, it was, it was really fun, you know, to work with them. So that was kind of the original concept, get the people at the top to buy on to this. And then once they did, uh, and, you know, Ferninger, who was the, the founding um, uh, CEO prior to you, which I was so thrilled to see us uh, pass the baton to you and take on because you knew about this from the beginning. Um, you know, she and I would go from CEO to CEO and basically talk them into, you know, joining the, the team. And, you know, it, it worked great. And it was powerful to see with a small group of people how much change you could make. And I think that's one of the legacies that America's Tooth Fairy has is uh, we have always kept, you know, the, um, the overhead control and been able to cover that by the people, the companies that were supporting us so that every single dollar that was donated would go right out to the charities. And that's a pretty incredible uh, reputation, you know, that we have and legacy. So anyway, and you guys with what you're doing right now with your team of five mighty soldiers, <laughs> Just incredible. And I know that all the companies that work with us really appreciate the fact that you and your team have kept to this concept of keeping it lean and mean and effective, you know, so that really everything they give doesn't get dissipated on overhead that we've got at the central office, but gets out to the charities that they want to help. So kudos to you and your team. Well, thank you so much. And I, I think what's really exciting is that um, there has been a lot of continuity in that initial inspiration and passion. Um, you know, our current board still is, you know, representative of multiple dental companies, um, but everyone's working together um, to better serve the children that we are trying to reach. And I also think that, um, you know, the idea of, of us becoming a resource provider or evolving into a resource provider, um, that has really, you know, certainly helped kept us on mission, but more, more so uh, really helped leverage, you know, all of the resources and our clinical of our clinical partners and other community organizations that we're working with and being able to be a resource for equipment, um, you know, dental supplies, funding, educational materials, training, um, virtual programs for education, um, you know, kind of new creative ways to reach, ki reach kids, especially over the past couple of years uh, with COVID, um, that has, uh, you know, really allowed us uh, to help each other. And I always see our organization, you know, how do we keep the boots on the ground well equipped uh, to do what they need to do? And uh, it's just been exciting to, you know, certainly be a part of this and, and see how it's grown. Uh, but I think what really speaks to it is, you know, that core mission has remained the same, you know, being there for those organizations. And there hasn't been a lot of deviation from that. And, and that's really, I think, helped us, um, you know, better serve the clinics that we partner with. Right. Yeah, you know, all things change over time because needs change. 
Um, but, to, to, but to have the concept, you know, so clear and to have it stay for so long, I think is one of the secrets of the success. You know, it's, it's a very clear motivation to help the charities that are out there already doing good, but, but we can make them um, support it so that they can do even greater things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so between 80,000 and 94,000 organizations file for their 501c3 uh, charity designation each year, but only a fraction of them survive. Uh, and I think we touched on this uh, just now, but uh, certainly if you have anything you'd like to add, um, how do you feel that America's Tooth Fairy has remained strong for the 15, for the past 15 years when so many not other nonprofit organizations struggle? Yeah. Um, well, uh, we did kind of touch on it, but I, I think as I reflect upon that question, that one of the things um, is certainly that we've stayed true to the mission. You know, it was a mission that was well supported when we, you know, first introduced it. And we have been consistent, you know, we haven't veered from it. Um, I think that also uh, between the founders of this and those of you that have continued on internally, you know, we have always understood the importance of having financial literacy with the way that we do what we do and, uh, and have tried to run it with some concepts, you know, that are based in good business practices. So I think that's really important. Because so often people want to do good and they are trying to do good, but if they're not based upon something that understands economics and the need for fiscal responsibility, you can very, very quickly get underwater financially. And I think that's why a lot you know, just fail because they can't financially support themselves. Um, and uh, and the, ironically, one of our goals and America's Tooth Fairy is to help them be able to financially support themselves by taking some of the expenses off, uh, you know, with providing them with things they need, whether it's supplies, like you said, or equipment. Educational services, I think, is a wonderful thing, you know, that we have developed internally, modified, you know, as times have changed, and have been able to provide, you know, to the centers because it's hard for them to come up with things on their own or just to pull different pieces from different um, companies, you know, that are providing things. So, you know, I think that that has been the secret that we've been trying to provide things that they need mm -hmm. and that helps us be successful. And since America's Tooth Fairy began 15 years ago, what accomplishments are you most proud of? And are there any that you expected that you never expected us to achieve? <laughs> um, okay, what am I most proud of? Well, first and foremost, we're still here. <laughs> I'm very proud of that because as we both know, some much larger charities have uh, not survived, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the last 10 years. So mm -hmm. the fact that our little small mighty group is still here and we're helping so many millions of children and families, I I'm, feel really good about um, not only personally, but for all of us that have been involved, and it always takes a whole group of dedicated people, not just one. Um, the other thing I'm really proud about is as this has gone on, that I am no longer the driving force, that other people you know, have taken up the flag. And because if that transition doesn't happen, the foundation is going to fail because otherwise it just becomes somebody's you know, private little uh, project but mm -hmm. to have other people come in and take up the flag, you know, and keep moving forward and coming up with new ways to help and to modifying as times change, you know, that's, that's so critical, you know, for longevity. And so I am really, really excited. I'm proud of all of you, you know, and the work that you're doing uh, that is taking that forward. And, um, you know, what do I hope for the future? <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I'd be really happy if we can just continue um, bobbing and weaving with the financial uh, situations, you know, that come up and constantly change and with the needs that constantly change for the charities that we're trying to help. And I always go back mentally to where I was when we started the Children's Dental Center and that constant, constant thirst you know, for more supplies, more money, more educational materials, more help. And, you know, kind of put myself in the place of all these charities that we're trying to help through America's Tooth Fairy. So, you know, to have that national reach 
um, and to be able to see the comments, you know, from the groups that we're working with and helping and to see their gratitude, you know, and, and to know how it felt when I was on the other end receiving that help, you know, it's just wonderful. I mean, it makes me feel like all the years of hard work and planning and everything really had a, a wonderful end result. So that's what I hope for the future, that we can keep on doing that. And even though we'll morph and change, you know, we want to have that continue on because it's so needed. Absolutely. Well, and I also think your um, kind of the, the initial leadership and inspiration that stemmed from this, I think also gave the organization a spirit of collaboration. Um, you know, as we're talking about, you know, how tough it is for other charities and our organization is, is literally in place to help support, you know, certainly our clinical partners and, and provide critical resources to community organizations to educate the populations they serve and ensure that they have the Orca products at home to be able to maintain their oral health and as well as our, you know, new oral health educators within the community. Um, but certainly being able to partner, you know, with other organizations in our space, we, we all have limited resources. Um, but, you know, definitely, certainly my experience has been, and I, and I think it's a really, truly a result from the initial leadership and inspiration that you provided is, you know, being able to work with other organizations to help leverage what we can do. Um, cause the impact through partnership, I think dwarfs, uh, what we can all do alone. Um, and also helps prevent us working in silos. So. Right. That's, and that was kind of the original idea of this is a neutral, neutral island. You know, there you can put aside any um, feelings of competition or, uh, you know, this is all with the one pure purpose of helping children, period, you know. And so if we can continue to form, you know, these collaborations, it always makes uh, what you're doing stronger and easier and better. And, you know, there's no downside, only an upside. And I, I'm just so proud of all of the continuing collaborations that you and your team, Jill, have been able to set up. It's um, really strengthens the organization. And then just finally, from a, a you know, a dentist perspective, um, you have given so much um, and, you know, to your profession, um, as well as to those in need. Um, and can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, what you find rewarding about participating in our organization or, um, you know, donated services that you've provided in the past, or, you know, talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, what was rewarding about those experiences and, and why you think it's important for, um, you know, other dental professionals to get involved. Um, yeah, I can. I, I think that, um, that for me, having a you know, private dental practice um, that really focused on overall health, and wellness and that the mouth is connected to the rest of the body and the mouth helps control, you know, systemic health because it's the first place that breaks down. Um, that seeing in a practice that was caring for people with very severe needs um, and to see them be able to turn their lives around just because we spent extra time teaching them, you know, the simple things, brushing, flossing, biofilm control, diet control, all of those things and to see these people invest large sums of money to rebuild their mouths and to see that it changed them and that they would maintain it then for 10, 20, 30, 40 years after that with only minor things. That really was the inspiration for the Children's Dental Center because I thought if these people with totally destroyed mouths could actually change their behavior enough so that it didn't break down again and they were quite frankly financially motivated not to have this happen to them again. I thought, what a gift if we can take this to a group of children who will never, ever be able to afford to do their mouths completely, like this group of people, and teach them early and their families how to prevent dental disease because it's so easy to prevent and teach them, you know, the simple, basic understanding of brushing, flossing, biofilm control, let them know how that makes their lives healthier. Then you have these children that look healthy, that have these beautiful smiles, that people respond to better, that helps them with their self-image, that helps them with their life. And they learn these skill sets. And what we found in research is they pass that on to their children. So you actually can stop the family problem 
of all oh, my teeth are bad, my parents' teeth were bad, oh, I can't help it, I'm a victim, and you change it to, I am in control, all I have to do is break up this biofilm in my mouth, and I can have a healthy mouth. And, you know, it, it empowers people, and it empowers children. And the other thing that, you know, was really became so impactful to me is that not only is a child, when their mouth is completely destroyed, devastated as far as their relationships with people in school and, you know, and, and then of course, if they have abscesses, they're in pain and all of that. That's one thing, but think about that child growing up now with this mouth that's deteriorating more and nobody kind of knows what to do. And the only care they're getting is extractions, you know, they're going to be crippled emotionally and physically from that point on. How are they going to get jobs? How are they going to be out there in the marketplace where so much emphasis is put on beauty and, you know, on health and they've, they've been marginalized before they even get into the starting gate, you know, to start their life. So I don't mean to be preachy, but you asked what inspires me and what inspires me is helping them be able to have a life. You know, that's got endless possibilities. So Wonderful. Yes. And I think, you know, reinforcing that oral health, overall health, systemic connection is critical. And you're absolutely right. It's, it's a lifetime yeah. of, you know, potential <laughs> that <laughs> we can offer them um, by, by working together. Um, so Dr. Sheets, we are so grateful for your support and leadership on our board and, um, you know, look forward to working with you in the, in, for years to come to help change the lives of children across this country. And uh, we thank you so much for your time today. It's my pleasure. It's always fun to talk with you. And it's so great to see what all you're doing. (laughs) Well, thank you.